Hello, folks, and welcome to Champion Cinema. I'm Chris with the contaminations. And I'm Chris with a... K, you mean to say. <laughs> a K. Yeah. Okay. yeah, there are Ks, but let's face it, that noise is the most memorable thing about that movie. So. <laughs> so, yeah, this week we're looking at a couple of alien-inspired movies, to be polite, let's say. With uh, Italy's contamination and uh, U- the UK's inseminoid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should, we just, should we just get to it? <laughs> not much to say about <laughs> no, it. Not it? really. <laughs> Cinema. So, Contamination was released in 1980, runs for one hour and 35 minutes, directed by Luigi Cozzi, returned to the show again after his triumphant um, review of Star Crash. Mm. It stars Louise Marlowe as Stella Holmes, Ian McCulloch as Ian Hubbard, Mariso, sorry, Marino Massé as Tony Aris, Gisela Hahn as Perla, and Siegfried Rauch as Hamilton. Mm. What's it about? What's it about? Well, <laughs> it's about a bunch of men that gun to Mars. Yeah. And there's a cave that has peas in it. <laughs> and the, But they don't bring back peas. They bring back eggs that look like coffee beans. And, but, and then, <laughs> because of that, they decide to put them in boxes that say coffee on them, I assume. Um, they explode. Mm. And the plan is... And, oh, and also, there's, like, an alien queen yeah. that lays these eggs. And the plan is to just, like, put the eggs everywhere... So that so the light explode and, yeah. and, and kill New York. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> bit bit more freehand than usual. I but think I, just... uh, I think James Cameron saw this when <laughs> before when he was planning aliens. It it's a bit sus that there's a queen alien. I'll, yeah. I'll say that exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I watched the interview with um, with Katzi on the old Anchor Bay DVD today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Just to get some like background information like, straight from the Hodges mode and stuff. And he, he actually calls the film The Illegitimate Son of Alien. Because <laughs> <Nice. laughs> the original title was straightforward. It was Alien Arrives on Earth. But then the producer was like, no, um, I've got this just this fucking China Syndrome movie I've been trying to do, but it just fell through and its name was Contamination. So I want to use that. And he was like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah, that old chestnut. But weirdly, though, like either it's a case of two minds thinking alike, or we're just travelled through Italy to the other exploitation producers of the other side of the road, because the other alien ripoff from 1980 in Italy was called Alien 2 on Earth, <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> which is weird. It's like they've got a spy in the camp or something. Yeah, yeah. And um, you'll be disappointed now. Uh, Cotsy wanted Carolyn Monroe as the Stella Holmes character. Mm. But then the produce, this producer just pinned his arse, it seems like, from the way in this interview. Producer was like, now nah, the Stella character should be older and ugly, so they hired Louise Marlowe. And I was like, that's fucking harsh. <laughs> hey, she's not, she was in her mid-30s, I checked. Oh, yeah. And she's not fucking ugly. <laughs> no, not at all. Bless her. <laughs> Imagine seeing that interview like years later, thinking you got along with these people and be like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully she never saw that yeah. particular soundbite. Uh, he has, he, this, this is kind of mind-blown. There's two little bits of info here that are mind-blown. Mm. Uh, Marino Massi, who plays Tony, the cop. Oh, yeah. He appeared in two episodes of EastEnders. <laughs> no way. In 1986. Fucking hell. How did he find his way over to the UK? I know. Yeah, bizarre. <laughs> but th- this is even more weird, considering A, this movie and the month we're doing and what it's leading up to. His first film was opposite Roger Moore, and it was called Romulus and the Sabines. Fucking hell. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is a, a rather obscure tie-in. And instance, I wouldn't but... have known that if, unless I was like, wait a minute, I know this guy from something. But yeah. apparently, I, he's, it says he's in Tenebrae, but I don't remember him from Tenebrae. I think he just looks like another Italian actor, but like it was just based on that that I looked through his uh, filmography and was like, fucking he's standards. <laughs> He does have a very Italian look. I oh, yeah. About <laughs> yeah, he does look like a couple of other actors from around this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, but yeah, as for the like, tidbits, obviously the film was caught up in the video nasty scare in the early 80s, but it was not one of the prosecuted films, but it was still seized at one point, and mm. it's now available uncut with a 15 certificate. How times okay, have changed. I can probably see why. Only just for the, you know, the the exploding sort of chest cavities oh, of stuff, course. I guess, yeah. is, is yeah. what got it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think they're well done. I think those. Oh, yeah. The gold bits are the best bits in the film. Mm, yeah. yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, yeah, like, speaking towards, you know, the good and the bad of this movie, like, I thought it was a pretty poorly paced movie overall. It's um, far too fucking slow. Yeah. In, in all the wrong places as well. Yeah. 
But you know, when it's good, it's it's good. I think they ha- they had something. They had an mm-hmm. idea because mm-hmm. it it's an interesting one. It feels a bit like they're doing invasion of the body snatchers as well, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like people you can't trust who who's who, and, mm-hmm. and people have been overtaken by the aliens yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it has an interesting idea. They could have done a lot more with the paranoia and stuff, and just the you know the eggs and stuff. That just feels a bit wishy washy. I mean, I've seen this once before. Hmm. So when the film started, I was like, oh, fuck, I remember now. Like, another film it reminds us of is the fucking opening 10 minutes is just zombie flesh. It is. Yeah. Ship arrives in, a, in the New York Harbor. Yeah. They go and investigate, find some dodgy shit. And, I was, and like, Cotty says it was inspired by the opening of that old movie, Them, mm. like the 50s movie. And I was like, okay. And he says he hadn't even seen zombie because he doesn't like zombie movies. And I'm like, well, fucking someone saw it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Someone was feeding them ideas. I don't want to do this. And he's like, great idea. The boat is even called the Caribbean Lady. Yeah. And like Zombie, the film split in two halves. New York half, exotic location half. Yeah, and then sudden smash cuts to them being in a... Front yeah, country. Ian McCulloch's in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which gives you massive zombie vibes, yeah. obviously. <laughs> and, but Cutty does say, though, during the interview, like he says the initial plan was, like, I think he's slightly tongue-in-cheek, but he says like, the initial plan was just to get all the actors from Zombie because it was making so much money. Yeah. So there's yeah. obviously some influence there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because yeah, I do like the idea. I mean, I always like the idea of... Uh, uh, a ship, you know, a, a spooky ghost ship that just pulls into port and everyone's dead or everyone's mm. missing. Yeah. And they have to go on board to try and yeah. figure out, it's you know. It's a good mysterious uh, plot starter, isn't it? Really? Yeah, definitely. So it's it's one of them sort of plot devices that I, I never mind when it shows up in a movie. I think, yeah, it's fine. It's good. Mm. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of like, apart from just the fact it's kind of ripping off uh, zombie uh, fleshy does, it's like... Just all the stock footage and stuff, and yeah. I don't know. It just seems to t- it kind of plods a bit at the mm. start. Um, I do like I do like though that he does say in the um, uh, interview that like they, they went to New York for like two days to get all the establishing shots and stuff yeah. like that, like shots to the to a World Trade Center. Illegal center. shots, I assume as well. But maybe probably, I don't know. <laughs> but just the way he says like, "Oh yeah, we didn't hire any helicopters. They're just helicopters that were just flying past." <laughs> I'm like, "That's the way you do it. Yeah, Save totally. money. Save money. <laughs> yeah, why not? I guess yeah, exactly." <laughs> I got some uh, good quotes from Ian McCulloch. Yeah. I thought I was absolutely terrible in contamination. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. And he ref- I just love this such an English dad quote, especially considering he was probably like in his 60s when he said this in an interview. He referred to his Italian movies as silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's silly. But also said the best work in vacations an actor could have. Well, yeah. As I've said before. It has this vibe, this movie, yeah. doesn't it? Where, like, when they get to the hotel bit, I have strong holiday vibes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone's just chilling out and having fun and they're just making a daft movie on the side. Yeah, exactly. But enjoying being on holiday. Yeah, exactly. Um, the one thing I thought about, it, I've never really thought about this, but I guess is it in McCulloch's actual voice? Yeah. Yeah, it's I always think, him doing his own voice. Yeah. I think part of us maybe thought it was like he was like dubbed or something. Uh, I guess it's just shoddy, like, du- like looping or whatever. Uh, yeah, well, ADR. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I just kind of always thought in the back of my head, like he, that that's not his real voice in Zombie Flesh, he does, but then obviously it's the same voice in this, and I was like, oh, and then Zombie Holocaust as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. so just that, like, Smah. yeah, he's got it's such all... a great fucking British voice, yeah. <laughs> great smarmy, not smarmy, but just like, I don't know, um, just confident, that, I guess, yeah, it's just that tone that, like, okay, well, what are we gonna do? Sort of like, it's not, <laughs> I'm doing an American accent because I can't really do Ian McCulloch's voice, but. <laughs> The only way I can replicate it is by doing an American accent. The, 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 the quote that's easy to quote from him is just that line, zombie flesh. You think, a man! Yeah. <laughs> Smash cut to a zombie. To quote a, a good line from this movie. Yeah. It looks like it, it exploded, but not by a bomb. No. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't know, something about that line just stood out to us. Yeah, the other guy should have been like, well, I... If you, would be, if you wouldn't be fucking here if you explode my bomb. <laughs> There'd be a hole in the ship. <laughs> there's some there's some choice lines in this movie. I do like, though, like, it's just, I know it's of the time, and, like, I don't know if they were trying to go for something else, or there was supposed to be another payoff later, but, like, like McCulloch doesn't show up till the first half an hour. Mm-hmm. And when yeah, he does, which is you know, yeah. <laughs> and when he does, you know, he's, he's, he's in a funk, he's drinking all the time, he doesn't want nothing to do with this bullshit. <clears throat> it's ruined his life. The one thing 
that snaps him out of his funk is cuffing a woman hard in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes for it with her, doesn't he? Yeah, and then he's, he's just, right, then he's, and he's like, just so you, just so, just to make sure we're on the same page. And they both smile, and it's like, ding, 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 and they're in fucking Colombia or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and he's got his holiday clothes on and that. <laughs> he's fucking chinos and stuff. He's on. chinos and he's fucking flowery shirt. And then I'm like, that <laughs> sharp fucking sobered him up, didn't it? I just need to smack a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Back in the horse. <laughs> Tell you one thing, though. I, I'm pretty sure it is fake, but I hope that bit with the rat exploding was fake. <laughs> I was just going to come to that, actually. Mm. Like, that is either a very, very good special effect. Yeah, Or know. they exploded a rat, potentially through, like, negative pressure. Yeah, I don't know. Like, atmospheric pressure. You probably I, could explode a rat with, like, negative... I just told myself pressure. it was... I just told myself it was fake. <laughs> Because, yeah, uh, I was just like, oh, God. Yeah, when it comes to these movies back then, like, rats were the most expendable animal. I think. Yeah, it's like, pretty you know, fucking lab, sad. lab rats and nobody cares yeah, and all that no. sort of stuff. Yeah, pretty grim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let's, let's hope it's just fucking somebody was really good. Like, the one thing that they could do really well in life was they could make, like... Killer-looking rats. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that explode. And finally, they were like, oh, thank fuck. This is, like, what I've been waiting for. Because the thing that makes us think it's fake is there's like a weird cut just as it explodes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, so, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Another sort of uh, goofy thing that stood out to me is uh, in this movie, though, um, just looking at me notes, the guys in New York that have like clearly European uniforms on. Yeah. <laughs> Catch yeah. They're like super Italian looking. Yeah, uh, uniforms with the little caps and the little straps and stuff. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. Just in that that whole facility where the rat gets exploded. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It's just like no, like come on, guys. Could you not have tried to give them something <laughs> slightly less Italian looking? Well, that's that's the weird thing about this film. Just as far as like other stuff with fashion goes and stuff. Like Cotti said, he wanted clothes that would look like they could be from twenty years ago now or twenty years in the future. Like just very yeah. basic beige clothes. Yeah. But also, the film never really says if it's set in the future or not. I'm I'm assuming it is because we've been to fucking Mars by 1980 in this film yeah. apparently <laughs> and there's like the, the base they're in is very futuristic but never actually explicitly says what when it's set no, which is a good thing it's a good, it, yeah. it's a good it thing is, though yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's interesting that they went with medieval helmets like from the well, bio suits yeah <laughs> Uh, that, the, the mad angular metal helmets that they have on yeah. at that point. <laughs> yeah, they're very very strange looking. Yeah. Um, so the, the big, uh, the, the, my least favourite bit in the film, which mm -hmm. it's one of those scenes where you're like, this would be good if it wasn't going on for four times longer than it should, is the bit where she's trapped in the bathroom with the egg. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a lot of back and forwards. Oh, it? Jesus. Yeah. It, like, it's one of those things where like, that's, in, that's terrifying, but you're trapped in a, a small room with something, locked door, it could fucking kill you at any second. You can. Mm. It's going to end with you exploding. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty pretty scary. Yeah. But it just fucking drags it on yeah. for so long to the point where you're like, I don't care anymore. Like, just get her yeah. out the fucking bathroom, please. Yeah, because you see both actors, don't you? You see Ian McCulloch and you see like uh, yeah. that Marino Massa. Uh, like, on the phone. Yeah, it just keeps going back to them, and they're like, oh, Where is she? And mm. stuff. And you're like, oh, Fucking hell, go knock on the door, mate. And then they go up to the door, and he's like, Let's leave her. She can get room service. And they walk away. And then it cuts back to him. And he's like, Then he looks back, and he's like. I don't know, I've just got a feeling. I'm out for fuck's sake. <laughs> and throughout in this, fucking obviously the... <laughs> like, fuck, I, I'm not sure what they were going for there. Like, no, it's a I weird mean, choice. I, I, I kind of like it because it's odd and creepy. <laughs> but yeah, it, you do hear it, way, especially in this yeah. scene, you hear, you hear it way too much and like... I think there's one bit where it's just playing over them eating dinner and I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, okay, so I, I thought about this actually specifically i think the interpretation i have is he was like hearing it in his head oh which, yeah true because he does freak out once it explodes yeah because because yeah. at first i was like i, I chuckled as well i was like what the fuck like, like, the, fuck, why like is it, the, yeah. the fucked up the fade out somewhere <laughs> yeah they're like uh oh <laughs> uh, but yeah i assume it's because he's like psychically linked to the egg mm. or some shit yeah well yeah that makes, makes sense, sense. <laughs> yeah um and then of course you know you can't have a film like this with a male and a female character without having some sort of fucking forced love story angle of course where like th there's been no indication that she's interested in this guy at all mm -hmm. and then as soon as they're tied up she like kisses him and he says that was the most fantastic moment of my life and yeah. I'm like calm down it's like you, you've met her like a day ago yeah mate. like what else you do, what's, what have you been doing with your life a peck on the lips is the most fantastic moment of your life <laughs> totally yeah <laughs> yeah that, that did catch uh, catch me ears yeah. as well when he said that like, <laughs> it's just so fucking over dramatic <laughs> Maybe that's his line that he uses on women, I guess. Yeah, that's his yeah, that's his shtick. That's his patter, that's his bar patter. 
You're the most beautiful lady I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> That's his like opening line. <laughs> yeah, and every woman goes, fuck off, in your life. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, though, speaking of women, they're, they're quite restrained by not showing boobs during the shower scene. I was, I was yeah. convinced we were going to see boobs yeah. in, in this type of movie, but then they just don't. I think Cotty's quite a restrained guy when it comes to... He's not, he's not the sleaziest of uh, Italian <laughs> filmmakers. No. To be fair, all, every time I've seen him interviewed, he just always seems like this like big kid who just loves sci-fi movies. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he says that's essentially why he stopped making movies, because it was, it was even then it was hard to like do a sci-fi movie in Italy, because apparently mm. just sci-fi isn't big in Italy that much. So. Yeah, and people just want, you know, that sort of grotten stuff. <laughs> yeah, Horror, you're gonna, at the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting, though, that um, I don't think they were actually canon at the time, but Golden Globe was from canon, like, bought the film for American distribution, and it did mm. okay. Fucking yeah. gr- grim, though, like, the date, oh, I think, what's that? It, 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 is it Bolo- Bologna? Bologna? Oh, yeah. yeah like, it, o- yeah. it opened there on oh. the same day. There was, like, a fucking bombing that, like, killed hundreds of people, so the film just tanked. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, they said it made a <laughs> thousand lira. That was it. God, just in Italy. some world yeah. event. Yeah, but I think it did better, like you know, in America and on video and stuff like yeah. that. And and, and uh, Golan did go back and rename it Alien Contamination. Mm. So he got an alien in the title finally. I think a film like this was always like destined to succeed on you know oh, of course. video and stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. Just totally. for, and then once the notar- the notoriety and stuff comes through with the video mm-hmm. nasty and all the rest. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah. this film would be as remembered now, especially over here if it wasn't on the video nasty. Yeah. List. like it has obviously its gory moments that it would have it. It would have its fans, I guess, but mm. it wouldn't have its notoriety without being on that. List. Yeah. yeah, and it is. It does some interesting stuff. Like, I, I find it interesting that like Tony dies and stuff. I think that was kind of unexpected. So that's in my highlights. Like the Cyclops eating Tony and like crunching his head. I think that's quite <laughs> yeah. effective. Yeah. yeah, there's something I don't know. Like fucking extremely vaginal about it yeah. something I don't yeah. know what it is but it's, it's <laughs> vaginally visceral is what it is <laughs> <laughs> the whole mouth prop and stuff and, yeah and then it coming and getting them and stuff it's like yeah. it's just like obviously it's a dummy but it's just the way it like I don't know if it's like reverse photography where it like sucks his head into yeah. the mouth and then it like crunches down but his chest caves in at the same time it looks yeah. really nasty yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. there's some decent effects going on in this film yeah like the, the highlights of me are basically like you know I like Ian McCulloch just because I like zombie flesh so yeah. I always like seeing him knocking about. All the excessive chest bursting is ridiculous. I do, yeah, I, I do like, though, how, like, it the, the seemed like they couldn't fi- quite figure out a way to, like, have something burst through material. So everyone is just wearing, like, a square of material that pops off. <laughs> yeah, it's like a lab coat and then, yeah, like, a square of material. Random square material on the yeah. front, like a fucking, um, like, Long John's or something. It gives us vibes of, uh, remember that uh, movie Bowfinger? Yeah. <laughs> the guys, yeah. With the, <laughs> it just does the effect, the yeah. melting face effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they just they just had this cool somebody showed them this cool effect it was like we're do, doing that do, we're doing that eight times <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's not effects they literally just went to a butcher's and got loads of livers and intestines and shit and yeah. exploded them so it looks very you know very grotty and very real probably stunk probably <laughs> so yep, probably one of them things because yeah. it's like linking back to Alien I always remember the, the trivia that like because they used like whatever it was like pig pig guts or something as well mm-hmm. um, yeah. but like they had to quickly change out the 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 guts because it like stunk immediately under the, mm-hmm. the lights and stuff. Yeah. Like, eh, so, What's yeah. the other one as well? Was it was that was it the was it the second one with Lance Henriksen where like he was using a mixture of like milk and yogurt and it went off when they were setting up the show. Like yes. the, the lights heated it up and he just basically had to gargle fucking yeah. rotten milk. Yeah. <laughs> like Jesus. I know. Just fucking use water with food colour or something in it, surely you didn't have to use milk. Yeah, get some water, put some flour in it. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, like something like that under those insane lights that they used to use in Hollywood that were like 100 degrees. Yeah, stuff. mental. Like mercury lights or something. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but another highlight, I, I love Goblin, so Goblin score. It's not one of the best. No, I was going to say, yeah, I was going to come on to the, the, the score. I like the score. Mm. I potentially don't think it works for this film. No, in I, th- places. I, th- I th- well, like, I think the, the the best part of the score is like the main theme that you hear like over the final scene, like the funky kind of disco-y funk music yeah, the, yeah. with the organ and stuff but yeah some yeah. of the other stuff is I think he says on the interview I didn't realise this because I know Goblin broke up around this time mm. but they'd already broke up so like the main guy Claudio Simonetti was not part of this at all uh, so that's okay. something as well that yeah, it, when you know yeah. when you've got, you got a main member of the band missing you, you hide to do a score it's going to sound a bit different a bit yeah, off or something but yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, there's a particular bit. Um, I'd say when they're driving at one point uh, to go see Hubbard, I guess, mm. and the music comes in and it's like, dun, 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 dun. And I was fully expecting it just kicking to like nine till five or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was going to kick in a fucking flash. Yeah. <laughs> I think any song like that, yeah. any song that opens with dun, 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 <laughs> it's like five beats and it's like, that is really weird I think there's another like bit where it sounds almost like it's going to kick into a Proclaimer song or something <laughs> <laughs> kept getting weird vibes from this <laughs> like I said the, the soundtrack's good I just think it, there's just times where it like it got yeah. in the way of the movie a little bit yeah it's, it's definitely not one of Goblin's best scores and like yeah. I said it was at like the arse end of them breaking up and shit yeah. so I can understand why but yeah. it's, it's so weird but Goblin is there's so many times where they're not credited properly mm. in the credits for this they're called The Goblins yeah and I'm like they've never, they've never been the go- it's Goblin <laughs> fuck's yeah. sake even on Dawn of the Dead, they like get a sort of co credit with like um, Argento and it's by Dario Argento and the Goblins again. Mm. I'm like, I don't know where the fuck that came from. Just people just think, oh, Goblins sounds strange. I'll add yeah. it up on the Yeah, start, it's but... obviously they mean S. <laughs> <laughs> they mean Goblins. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and obviously uh, I mentioned earlier, but I suspect the, end, the movie ends with an illegal shot of New York as well. It just feels very much like the camera's like a bit low down. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder who that dude is walking across the street. Because for a moment I was like, oh, is this character? And then it just pans off and I'm like, that's just some guy who doesn't yeah. realise he's an Italian <laughs> yeah, alien totally. knockoff. Exactly. They just literally went to New York and went, oh, just film over there, film yeah. on the street there. <laughs> Quick run, there's a police car coming. <laughs> and then a, an egg just explodes in a bin and just wastes itself, basically. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Kill, make the trash explode. Like, yeah. Like, was that sequel <laughs> bait? Or was it just... I don't know. Or was that, like, the last egg just blowing up and, like yeah. I said, wasting its shot? I don't know if he intended to make a sequel of this, but I did find out today that he had intended to make two more Star Crash movies. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> and someone, someone pulled him aside and was like, nah. <laughs> just, 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 just be happy you made one. Yeah. Luigi, I'm sorry, uh, mate. You know, but... that, that robot with a fucking Texan accent... Nobody like that. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> See what you're trying to do, but, but nah. I was talking to Ian the other night and he said it was fucking quote unquote silly. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate put down. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but as for the merchant stuff, I mean, you get a choice between the Arrow uh, UK or US Blu-ray, both the same. Mm-hmm. A bunch of extras, most of which actually were on the old Anchor Bay DVD. So mm. I think the main difference is it's got um, a little feature on like Italian knockoffs. Yeah, and okay. um, the, the commentary from uh, Fangoria editor you mentioned. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seemed like I, I, I kind of whizzed through it and like listened to a few points. It seemed like quite good commentary. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Just send you the link to the oh, yeah. movie posters because obviously there isn't much art out there in the Not world. New art, anyway. Yeah. No, um, which is sad. There isn't any action figures or video games, of course. Mm-hmm. But looking at the international posters. There's kind of a pattern with that helmet and stuff and the eggs and stuff. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think that um, that one with the big green egg. Yeah, I think I think that was specially commissioned for the. That's the Arrow Blu-ray cover, so I don't yeah. think that's. I think that's a new piece of art. So. so it's kind of like the egg, and it's the uh, the, the Cyclops monster, I guess, right? And yeah, mixed, the with, eye on the mixed egg. with the egg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of cool. But yeah, that one down there, the U, oh, the U, that's the re-release video cover with the 18 on it. Just look how gruesome that cover is. So good. <laughs> Reaches beyond aliens to new extremes of suspense and terror. Contamination, contamination, contamination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really went for it. Yeah. Yeah, quite like the uh, the French poster with a, just the guy's bloodied face. <laughs> the yeah. Like, you would rent now. that. You would rent that if you were in France, <laughs> wouldn't you? You'd go and see it, definitely. Yeah, like, like, just go around and what the fuck this is, but I'm going to see it. <laughs> Looks brutal. Yeah. Like, I guess, is that Tony as well? Is it Tony? In the, their face? It looks a bit Tony. I think so. Yeah. The the lieutenant guy. Yeah, I think it is. It's a spoiler for the that he dies. Yeah. <laughs> His face covered in blood. Um yeah, yeah, some nice posters for it. I, yeah, I like the variants. Thing. They're just wild variants. Oh yeah. yeah. Like what's going on with the uh, South Korea's poster? Why is that one? Is that surely that's yeah, it does look like it's contamination. The one with like uh Crazy, like guy. <laughs> what the fuck with... is that? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they, they just wanted to do their own thing. They, they, they got that off from some of that movie, didn't they? That's <laughs> just some like random fantasy art that they went. We yeah. can't sell this based on a bunch of fucking eggs. So <laughs> get some, get fucking Shang Tsung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna do our own thing. We're gonna get a girl all, like in the background all tied up or something a naked woman do. covered like, with a dragon which actually looks that fucking cue the winged serpent <laughs> I don't know what to think <laughs> very possibly we're just like a demonic 
Not Shang Tsung, Shao Kahn looking guy. Yeah. With yeah. like knives in him and shit. Kind of so says he's getting shot by an arrow or something. He, he's got a tell. he's got a knife through him and like a spear, <laughs> like a like a sword. What Fascinating. The fuck? There you go. They went there completely their own direction. Imagine the disappointment though. <laughs> yeah, where's South that Korea. Purple fellow with the yeah. fucking knives in him. Yeah, you better be. He, it's it's finished in five minutes. You better fucking show up. I'm getting my money back. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do like the the main like American art with just the guy screaming in his space helmet. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. And, I like eggs at the bottom. It stuff. does give a very alien feel. That one. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's I suppose those are the alien esque moments of this movie, really, aren't they? Mm-hmm. The finding the eggs on and, a distant and, planet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like one guy being brought back and kind of being infected. I think yeah. that's across both movies. Yeah. yeah, that like infection sort of sub theme mm. of somebody being not who they who they appear to be because they've got an alien in them. Sort yeah, of thing. which is one of those things. Like I know, like you know, said, like he, he blatantly wanted to make something to like be like Alien, like because mm-hmm. he, he loved the film so much, but like. But Alien, like, that's not the the original part of Alien, a guy, no. if, you know, that's been in fucking so many sci- old sci-fi movies and stuff, but, mm. yeah, so it's always, like, a bit of a shame when, like, people get lumped with, like, oh, it's just an Alien rip-off, when, like, really, they just took things that Alien took from other movies. <laughs> yeah, definitely, like, yeah. those themes and ideas. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's not like, you know, there isn't a moment where it's like, there's just a guy in a full-on Alien suit that looks like an alien. Yeah. Oh, there's no character called Ripley, you know... <laughs> It's no one called Ripley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're never quite... They're, they're just, like, thematically inspired, really. Yeah, so, yeah Which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. and probably yeah. all inspired by the same movies from the 50s and 60s. Well, that's it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ridley Scott and James Cameron, I'm sure they took heavy inspirations mm. from things they saw as kids and stuff. Yeah. Although yeah. I was... Um, when I was watching an interview with um, one of the... I think it was one of the writers from Alien. He was like mm. saying he was showing like Ridley Scott like all the movies he loved, and Ridley Scott was like, "These are all fuck stupid made you hate them." <laughs> <laughs> really? So I think that's why Alien does stand out. That like it was directed by a guy who had no fucking interest whatsoever in sci-fi. Fi. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it definitely makes sense. Yeah. Champion Cinema. In Seminoid. Uh, released in 1981, mm. uh, with a runtime of one hour and 33 minutes, or, you know, three hours, as it's <laughs> called. Uh, <laughs> uh, shot primarily in Chislehurst Caves in Kent, mm. right. which does give it a unique and eerie atmosphere. It certainly does. Uh, directed by Norman Warren, Na- mm. Norman J. Warren, as yeah. he's credited. Yeah. Um, uh, with the top actors, Judy Geeson as Sandy. Robin Clark as Mark, Jennifer Ashley as Holly, Stephanie Beecham mm. as Kate, famous British, probably yeah. the biggest star in this movie, Stephanie yeah. Beecham, surely. Yeah, uh, Stephen Grives as Gary, Barry Horton as Carl, Rosalind Lloyd as Gail, uh, Victoria Tennant as Barbara, quite big cast this one, Trevor mm. Thomas as Mitch, and Heather Wright as Sharon. Mm. So what what is it all about well, when a team of space archaeologists discover that something is strange about the planet they're on, one of the female members of the team is impregnated by an alien creature, then begins to bump them off one by one, because she's pregnant now. Mm. She's pregnant, she's, she's crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> you could look at it that way, that that's what the film's trying to say, that all pregnant women are fucking yeah. mental. Yeah, she has like a, cr- a crazy hankering for human flesh. Yeah, well. yeah, that's, that's the like craving, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the movie was uh, co-funded by Shaw Brothers, who put up uh, half Crazy. the half the budget. So you get yeah. Rubber and Shaw gets a credit at the start of the movie, and mm. it's a, it's a weird mix. It's it's not necessarily an alien. It's like a sci-fi slasher, sla- a bit of monster movie. It's a bit. It's like yeah. three different genres mixed together. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, whether it's a rip-off or not, is like we're saying, it's a different question. Like Norman J. Warren says the script was completed months before Aliens UK release. Mm. But, yeah. I don't know, look at the dates, right? Alien came out in the UK September 79. This came out in the cinemas in March of 81. That's a big, that's a big gap. Yeah, I, I, I call, I'm calling bullshit on that because I think some of the trivia, like, contradicts itself immediately. You know, they're mm. like, oh, the production started before the movie was made. Um, but then the other trivia that floats about this movie is that what, it's something like the script was written in four or five days yeah, and they filmed it in, like, four weeks, principal yeah. photography. because he said he, he had, like, backers, but he didn't have a script. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. like... Those two bits of trivia 
just nullify any like claim that they weren't like inspired or ripped off alien. <laughs> like they definitely were. And as well, like like I said last week, it seems like one of the, it could be one of those movies that like it was it was written before they saw it, but then they saw it so how popular it was and added a few things. Yeah, yeah. To sort of link back to that and remind people of it because Stephanie Beecham looks a hell of a lot like Ripley in this movie. Yeah, I think there's definitely more things going on in this movie that feel more alien. Like yeah. there's literally scenes where there's just a bunch of people, a bunch of scientists looking people in jumpsuits sat around a breakfast table having a discussion <laughs> yeah. and it's like ah, okay um there's the stuff like scientist gets infected and gets brought into the quarantine zone mm-hmm. you know and, and all yeah. that sort of stuff it just feels there's a doctor that, i mean the guy at times he probably sounds like he's doing an ian holm impression mm-hmm. yeah you know i'm sure it's just his natural voice but it is like there's just it was given us proper like ash vibes and stuff yeah yeah there's no doubt in my mind that there were they were properly like inspired and, and yeah. like, borrowing I think alien. so. I mean, I believe him that he wrote a script called Inseminite before yeah. he saw Alien. I totally believe that. That yeah. seems believable to me. Yeah. yeah. But, they, you know, I'm sure there's this, it's too much of a coincidence. Like you said, it's not necessarily that it's like they've just taken like entire idea. It's more like little things mm-hmm. that remind you of Alien that yeah. is a bit too close. But you never know. But like you said, like fucking Stephanie Beecham, halfway through the movie, puts on the blue jumpsuit. She's got the Ripley. There's even a scene where she's lying there in tiny underwear and a little white tank there top. Is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. There's just moments where you're like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, though, speaking of which, I think Stephanie Beecham, like, she, she's the highlight for me of this movie. Yeah. I thought she did a cracking job. Um, there's a bit where she's like u- upset at having just killed somebody. Mm hmm. Um, and I thought, bloody hell, like, she makes all the other actors look bad. Yeah. Because she's like, her level of acting is like much higher, I guess. Um, I did see that she, you know, she literally took this movie for the paycheck. <laughs> yeah, for the kids, basically. She had yeah. recently, I, I don't know, had she had twins or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, she wanted to do a play that was like not paying very well. But yeah. then there was this movie and she was like, oh, I'll just do this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it pays better. It's a quote from Norman J. Warren that said like she was lovely and stuff, but she used to like antagonise him before takes and stuff and ask him what, what her motivation was just to take the piss. <laughs> 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 it's good though professional yeah. because she, she never looks like she's dialing it in or no. anything she does a she does a cracking job um yeah it's and it's a it's both a highlight of the movie and a kind of like oh fuck you movie like she just disappears from the film mm. <laughs> you never find out what happens to Kate. yeah do you never see what happened to her after no. that grenade goes off yeah and yeah she just drags she her off didn't she yeah. yeah yeah it's like okay yeah she's got like a bad leg and yeah and then she gets dragged off and then mm-hmm. that's it i was kind of expecting that to come back or something yeah me too yeah, yeah. yeah she just nooped out of that movie yeah yeah, one thing that's interesting. Did you watch? I guess you watched this on YouTube as well, because it's yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't and, uh, find it any, anywhere else. And the, the comment section was just full of Five Nights at Freddy's references, and I was like, what yeah. the fuck? So yeah. I looked into it, and like literally the birth scene is mm. audio they use in Five Nights at Freddy's for a jump scare. Yeah, that's a really obscure sort yeah. of reference. In it, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Like this, yeah. this film lives on in some way through a really popular video game. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. Yeah, because speaking of which, uh, I think the the women really represented in this movie. Mm-hmm. Sandy, isn't it? Sandy Trudy Trudy Geeson. Trudy Geeson um, yeah. She's like the the villainess, I guess, of the movie. Yeah, um, I think the movie genuinely really picks up once she like turns bad and she's picking them off and stuff. Yeah, once that once like the main meat of the plot starts to get going again, because like the first twenty five minutes, I don't know about you, but like the first twenty five minutes for me were like a fucking fever dream. I didn't know what the fuck was going. on. Like, I knew what was going on, but I was just like, why do I feel so fucking confused? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, like, same actually, because when, when, like, I think back to the movie, I, I think there was a bit where a guy had, like, crystals in his hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck, what's the crystals about? They, like, um, briefly mentioned at one point, oh, do you think so, there's a living creature out there that uses it for sustenance? And I'm like, okay. And mm, it didn't. <laughs> never never come back, back to it. No. And the fact that, so there's an alien, but is there an alien? Like, so there's, like, a monster alien that, like, grabs like sandy mm. and impregnates her but then what happened to that alien why why do we never see the alien again yeah and like what's up with like because they, they try and play it off like it's a nightmare mm-hmm. the impregnation yeah. but, and like because like the doctor's there yeah they never really go back to that because it's supposed no. to have happened it's supposed to have because obviously she gives birth to fucking babies at the yeah, end so yeah, it's supposed yeah. to have happened but like what's with the doctor being there like <laughs> yeah I, I guess maybe some of this is explained in like the longer cut of the movie because i i did see that 
cuts. I mean, I think it was mostly violence that was cut out. They trimmed some of the like uh, impregnation sort of stuff. Yeah, because they were worried about getting a you know an eighteen or what have you. Uh, yeah, or, think, uh, sorry, an X. Sorry. I think they trimmed the birth stuff as well. Yeah, but I just yeah. wonder if there was like something else they trimmed somewhere mm. that kind of like. <laughs> It was a, a terrible blow to the movie. He did say, like Norman J. Warren did say, the, the reason he shot the the impregnation scene like that mm. was to get like make it a bit more weird and otherworldly, so it didn't come across as like seedy. Because mm. he, he thought, if, it, if I just do it straight, it's going to get cut out. <laughs> so yeah, I'll make true. it at least somewhat artistic and bizarre and dreamlike, so we're not sure, quite sure if it's happening or not. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's quite cool. That, that scene's like kind of mad really it's crazy yeah. like she's yeah. illuminated under the table yeah there's like a mad bit where it kind of she's just like a silhouette and stuff and the camera yeah, pulls back and that like it superimposes like a sped up shot of it like spinning around the table mm-hmm. and stuff it's very bizarre yeah. So, yeah, and then the gross trippy. fucking like eggs going down the tube <laughs> yeah which so. just I don't know just made us go like Whoa. yeah <laughs> anything with like y- 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 gunge and yolks like I always hate <laughs> I forgot to mention it last week but I hate that bit where she shoots at the alien queen's like sack and fucking giant yolks oh, are coming yeah. out of it yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah it's awful <laughs> Uh, no, she does, bless her, Judy Geeson, like, the range that she has to do, and, she, you know, she gets fully naked on a table and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, she just has to act scared, upset, full of rage, aggressive. Mm-hmm. She has a, a full range of emotion and acting going on in this movie. Like, and, so. and, you know, in that fucking, you know, the scene where she gives birth, mm-hmm. like, I put her throat. Like, I bet she needed yes. a packet of tunes after that. <laughs> proper, proper, like gut-wrenching howl or something. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as for the babies, I mean, they're literally alien dickhead babies. They've got, yes. They've got bellends for heads, basically. They do. Like, that can't be a coincidence. Like, you also have aliens with phallic heads. <laughs> it's like they just went, right, we're going one step further than H.R. Giga, lads, just full-on bellends. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> um, I also got, got a laugh out of the Gary character who just, like... Just because of his, the way he says it and his choice of dialogue, he, I just called him in my notes Gary the Chauvinist because he's always just like, Move, woman! <laughs> woman! Do it, woman! <laughs> yeah, totally. There is a bit of that in this movie where it's like the women are just... Well, apart from Kate, I guess. Kate's mm. the one that's like the ass kicker. Yeah. But the, uh, well, and uh, I suppose Judy Geeson. Uh, oh, Scarada, yeah. uh, Sandy. But like, I don't know, they're a bit like damselly and like falling over and... Oh, just, yeah can't defend themselves at all until a man comes around the corner. Yeah, like that bit like towards the end where the, oh, I can't remember the character's name, but the blonde woman with like the blue jumper. Like, yeah. she's, like, she like runs away from the other woman who's about to get killed and then she's two seconds away from each other but she falls over on the stairs and yeah. a guy comes out and helps her. And I'm like, you didn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, is it, I'm trying to think, is that Sharon or is it Barbara? There's, two, there's a Sharon and there's a Barbara in this movie. Maybe Barbara. Because is, is Sharon the one that... She just needlessly saws her own leg off. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think which one it is, but yeah. I, did, I did chuckle at that bit where she's like, so she's trapped in the cave, I guess, or whatever. A, a foot's trapped under metal. And obviously, because mm. she hasn't got a man to help her get her foot out, <laughs> um, she's and you've fucked. Got, and you've got Gary at the other end of the line going, like, just just put the two cables together, pet. pet. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I can't help you. I can't help he's you. Like do it yourself. Mansplaining to her. Yeah. Being a massive dick hole. And then at one point, he's like, well, it's out of my hands. <laughs> yeah, he just walks away. He's like, ah, well. Uh, but yeah, so she, you know, I, 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 the whole thing is a, a, a suit is like, fucked basically so she's mm. run out of there and it's freezing cold in the cave yeah but she takes she opens her mask she she bypasses the like breathing system so she just puts the tube in her gob yeah and then um, that's the chainsaw on her ankle and then just, yeah but then <laughs> I don't know just the fact that she still dies I don't know it just seems yeah. stupid like what the fuck <laughs> why are you just dying I don't know it just seemed like needless pain before you death yeah <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that did make us chuckle. Yeah, bit. she just essentially made her own death like ten times worse. <laughs> <laughs> like, even like the whole opening the helmet and putting the tube in her mouth, she's like, I'm just going to make myself look like a right twat you know, <laughs> before I die. I'm surprised she didn't put up a backside or something. <laughs> cool I'm the corner back. going, all right, the, the leg thing I get, but what the fuck is with the tube? <laughs> <laughs> so mental. <laughs> But yeah, there is some uh, some quite grisly moments in this. That's mm. not super gory, but you know, there's some there's some gross parts, like the the bit in particular near the end where I can't. Is it Gary when like he's in the suit and she just rips his suit open, but at the same time rips his stomach up? Yeah, with yeah. her bare hands and, and he, he just screams. Gets, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's quite gnarly, definitely. Yeah. 
I did quite chuckle though at uh, when you know it kind of ends and then there's like a rescue team or like some salvage team come aboard and just mm-hmm. find the alien snacking on. Or is that before that where you find yeah he finds the alien snacking on the the woman that's for some reason just holding them like two normal babies like yeah we're gonna look, we're gonna look after these guys I'd be like fucking. <laughs> get them in the incinerator. <laughs> you would not hold them in a nurturing no. way, would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like wrapped up in a towel. Well, they're going to use them as bait or something. <laughs> I don't know, but it just seems weird. Yeah. Like, just, she's just got them in her arms. They're like, kick, kick, go, go. I'm like, what the fuck? Come on. Yeah. And uh, the main guy obviously just gets like ambushed by one of them mm-hmm. hiding in the, hiding by the door or some shit. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Yeah. And then the very last shot is the salvage crew and then they just peek out the little box and then it ends. Which yeah. feels like sequel bit. Sequel but bit. I don't think it ever was. No, no. You don't need a sequel to this movie. No. No. Yeah. It's definitely some interesting bits. I like I like that there's a strong female cast in it. And mm-hmm. I and I don't mean in terms of like character ability and stuff. I just mean like it's like fifty fifty. There's like yeah. probably as many men as there is women in this movie. Um I think Kate, the Stephanie Beecham character, I think she has, like, really good stuff to do in this film. Mm-hmm. I like that the bad guy is, like, Sandy, that is, is like, a female as well, and she's, she does she does it well. She's um, pretty scary in certain parts. She's pretty feral. Yeah, the, like, there's a bit where she's kind of sat with her legs crossed outside the, like, base, and mm. she's, like, coming over the radio going, like, you can't get away from me and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's kind of cool. I like yeah. I like that. Yeah. And also, I just 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 sprang back into my mind. Um, she, she fucking chews off a guy's kneecap at one point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just remembered that. Yeah. The Mark character, he gets his kneecap chewed off. Yeah, Jesus I didn't realise like the extent of it until he, he was trying to walk away. And I was like, Jesus Christ, that's a hell of a, a, hell of a gash, isn't it? <laughs> just literally snacks on it. <laughs> um, worst movie injury for me of all time, basically. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> Having yeah. somebody bite your kneecap bite, off. Bite the whole cap off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I... I definitely enjoyed it more than Contamination, I'll say that, uh, me personally. Yeah, I don't know which one I preferred more. Probably, no. I, I don't know, probably Contamination just for the gore yeah. and the goblin yeah. score maybe, but they're both kind of on the same level, really. Yeah, <laughs> I think that obviously the, the setting really like elevates the movie, I guess, mm. as well for this, like the, the whole cave thing, it makes the movie look more expensive. yeah. Like than it than it actually was. Um, Cause I mean, and I said last week, like I wanted to see this for a long time, and mainly just because like Norman J. Warren, along with a few others, were like were the only British directors to be like making films like this mm. in the late seventies, early eighties. Like they could sit alongside the American and Italian stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like not. Yeah. It was kind of a little renaissance of British horror, but I guess it was the like fill in the vacuum left by Hammer Horror. I guess right, so, like yeah, because by this point, period. I don't think Hammer were in well, maybe making a couple, but not as many as they used to in the sixties no. and early seventies. Now, no. and you know, these were a bit more of the time, a bit more violent and grotty and gritty and stuff. So yeah, mm, I've always yeah. wanted to check out more of his movies because yeah, it's um, names popping up my head, but the yeah, bloody. Patrick Stewart movie as well that we did. Oh, uh, Life Force. Life Force, yeah, yeah kind of Life Forcey vibes as well. Yeah, in a way, Maybe yeah. British and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. Around about that same time. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a film I would probably watch again. I think Contamination. I would personally, I would never go back to. But <laughs> watching, you could watch it again if you watch it in like one point two five speed. Or something. <laughs> yeah, it just plays through it. Yeah. No, I think if I was going to watch it again, I would just cut like twenty five thirty minutes straight into the movie. Basically. Yeah, yeah. As soon as McCulloch shows up and slaps him, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As for the uh, Blu-ray and stuff, I indicate I put out a Blu-ray. It's got commentary, interviews, Q and A's, trailers, and all that stuff. Yeah, cool. Um, or you could, I think this is well out of print now, but I'll mention it anyway. They did a Norman J. Warren box set called Bloody Terror, with uh, Satan Slave, Pray Terror, this and Bloody New Year. But like I said, it's I checked on Amazon. It's like 145 quid second hand. That what they did come out like. I think four or five years ago, so I think it's long out of print now. Mm, cool. yeah. Did I say it was released in America as Horror Planet as well? I don't know. If, is it still called that to this day? No, I don't think so. I did read somewhere just before we came on, on to do the show that, like, he found out, Norman Jawan found out about it and got them to change it back to Inseminize. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. 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 Like, why would you? That's a shit title. Yeah, that's very like, at least in seminar you're like, oh, what's that? It's in yeah. Hor- Horror Planet is just so fucking that's generic. Just, yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah. Well, similar to Contamination, of course, not not much like modern art or anything or, no. or action figures so or video games. Mm. Um, but just looking at the international posters, just sent you the link. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's some interesting variants. That in the fucking poster. French video cover with just Judy Geeson's face is fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's that's a, that's a box. If I saw that in the video shop when I was like six, I would shit my pants and never went to that section again. That's fucking awful. Yeah, it's good that. Yeah, it gives you... It doesn't tell you anything about the movie, no. but it also does give you... It's a bit of a, a sample, a spoiler ahead. Like, yeah. she goes shit crazy. Like, imagine saying that, like, you're about nine or ten... You get into horror movies. The, the the title you'd be like, "What's an inseminoid and who the fuck is that?" Or yeah. renting it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to see that movie. What is this again? With is that, what country is this? Argentina, born alien. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another yeah. AK title, unofficial AK title. Yeah, yeah, I like the the like ship. Is that ship in the movie at all? I don't think it is. No, <laughs> <laughs> just some like random concept art that yeah. they, they grabbed from something else. Towards the bottom, the blue one. Which has the British flag on it. Oh, yeah. But I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I know, yeah. It, was that ever on a video cover? Yeah, I think, no, I think it would have been, yeah. yeah. It's written. Yeah. But she's, she's, she's naked. Yeah, but she's out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit blue, that one. It does look it, familiar, that box. Really I think I think that is a real box. Yeah. <laughs> Look at hell. I mean, look at the British cinema poster. It's pretty much just a different shot from that same photo shoot. She's in focus, the alien's out of focus. Oh, just yeah. Perving in the background. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because I guess the, the <laughs> art of a line on the back is like the Blu-ray cover. I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the main poster. That's the American one. Yeah, that's yeah. the main one you see now. I, love, I fucking love that um, Australian one. It looks like a fucking Ghoulies movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it does>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what they're doing, crashing in on the Ghoulies all the time. <laughs> oh, Ghoulies saw that and went, I've got an idea for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, interesting. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that French box is gonna haunt my dreams tonight. Fuck me, <laughs> yeah. that's awful. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's what I mean. Her performance was really good. I it liked, was. I liked it when she was being menacing or like batshit crazy. Crack I thought she just, did it really well. Yeah, she's pretty mental. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her. So um, next week, back to the Aliens franchise with Alien Three and Alien Resurrection. Which version of Alien Three we're we gonna do? Should we do the assembly cut? Let's do the assembly cut for because I've never yeah. seen that one. But yeah, definitely. Before. Yeah. Um, and also, thanks to whoever bought a sticker from a little merch store. Much appreciated. I doubt it was anyone who listens because, you know, no one listens. <laughs> <laughs> Just me and you, personally, that really listen. Me and you, listen back to ourselves going, God, we're fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just pop for myself. Yeah, just listen to the pattern. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's random, isn't it? I guess somebody literally, there's somebody out there in the world like us. Who search for Charles Bronson and Chicken. Yeah, who finds it extremely funny that he just comments on things he likes and dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> I like chicken. Yeah, I should really just do the same one, but different quotes. Like, I don't like mayonnaise. Yeah. yeah. I hate Already. quiche. <laughs> It's yeah, a whole I'll, just, thing. I'll just do them different colours, like different colour shirt and pants and stuff. And yeah, then yeah. we'll get a cease and desist from the family. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Could you stop making fun of my granddad, please? <laughs> We're not making fun. It's a celebration, yeah, it's a tribute. It certainly is. You can find us on Instagram at Champion Cinema Pod. Uh, the shop we're talking about is Tea Public. Just search for Champion Cinema. Rate and review the show on iTunes, Spotify, and all that jazz. So, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, until next week with Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, I will see you doing the pit. See you in the hip. Nah.